This has been a long time in the making. I've had this switch for I can't tell you how long and uh, we are finally going to unbox this bad boy. Oh gosh. The box was upside down. Ta-da! <laughs> oh, did I break it? Oh. Nice. Now I did not get the Pokemon Go edition. I was debating it, I didn't do it. Will not need this. Oh. And there it is. Well, there I am. Hey, nice. I guess that was, uh, that was our Nintendo Switch unboxing. <laughs> now this, we will be streaming Pokemon Let's Go. We will be streaming onto the channel now that we have the, uh, the Switch unboxed. We're not doing that like in today's episode. Today we're talking about some focused stuff, but I do want to announce that we will be streaming, that we'll be streaming on YouTube probably tonight or last night when you're watching this and possibly today when you're watching this, we'll be streaming on the main channel. And there's a giveaway. Now the giveaway is going to work like this. There is a link in the description right now, a Gleam link. You click that to enter and here's what you get. One, Pokeball Plus will be given away once my Twitter hits 200,000 followers and you can enter into the giveaway to win said Pokeball Plus. As long as you're subscribed to YouTube, that's an extra entry, following on Twitter, uh, going on my Instagram profile and following me and then following my Twitch too, because Twitch, I will be live streaming Pokemon Let's Go extensively on Twitch. I'm gonna stream the beginning stuff of it on the channel, on the main channel, and then the rest of the streaming will be uh, on Twitch. And then I'll do some videos in the main channel as well regarding Pokemon Let's Go and the integration of, well, the, the collaboration of Pokemon Let's Go and Pokemon Go, basically what happens when you combine the two. So that's how you enter for the Pokeball Plus. And then also a copy of Pokemon Let's Go Eevee will be given away as well. And you enter the same way through the link in the description. And if you guys want to get this, it will be given away once my Instagram hits 100,000 followers or I will give it away uh, on December 9th. So one of the other, either I'm gonna give it away in a month or you guys juice up the IG page, get it to 100K, and I'll give it away once that happens. And again, the Pokeball Plus will be given away at 200,000 followers on Twitter, which we're like 1,900 away from, so that's easy. And I'll be streaming everything on this thing right here. We, oop, wrong zoom. We'll be uh, doing a lot of Pokemon Let's Go live streams uh, this weekend, videos this weekend, along with Pokemon Go videos. So there's a lot happening in the Pokemon world, and especially on this channel. So make sure to subscribe to the channel. Make sure to get ready, post notifications on for all the Pokemon Let's Go and Pokemon videos. Because also this weekend, we actually will be getting our Sinnoh Stone, which we can use to uh, evolve to something cool. So excited for that, excited for Pokemon Go. Enter in the giveaway, link in the description. Now we're actually off to uh, <laughs> my my YouTube. We're doing something fun today, Pokemon related as well. <laughs> what are we uh, up to right now? Pokemon, show, animation, arcade cloud. Yes. Please wait, uh, take the ticket. Here you go. Austin. Hello. Uh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Thanksgiving like, is like it's, it's like a like, big deal. <laughs> what? The I didn't know those things were still like around. Massive throwback. What's up, guys? Word from our sponsor. Mystic Seven here. Savage season. Thank you. Mystic Seven used to. <laughs> All right, here we go. We are doing a little bit of a trade right now. A big trade. A big trade. This is actually a lucky trade. This is Rourke, by the way. We're in a, we're in Ami What's right up, guys? now. How are you? Is there anything you want to say to the people right now? I just feel like uh, I'm on a journey to get a Gyarados. Yeah. And it's been a long journey. Yeah, it usually is for 400 candies. It's not a fun grind. It's not a fun grind. You should come to the pier. Is that, is that where it's really going down? It's down at that the pier? That is where it is, yes. Did okay, so <laughs> Golem yeah. for a Magikarp, obviously a good trade. Yes, definitely. <laughs> this is, oh, by the way, this is a 2016 Golem. So uh, it's gonna give me a guaranteed lucky Golem and you a guaranteed lucky Magikarp. Get that lucky Magikarp. He's always been lucky in Which my is, heart. Oh, 100%, yeah. and he's Australian. So whatever that means to you, you know? He's from Down Under. He is yeah. from Down Under and yes, comes out lucky. Beautiful. Beautiful, wonderful Look at that. Lucky. See, I'm right there. 311. Oh, 311. you're close. I'm making it happen, guys. Beautiful, lucky, lucky magic card. Look at that. Let's go. From Real French Shop Batman. Well, thank you for the trade. Good trade. Yes. See you guys out there. Yes. Good trade, buddy. Yeah. Give you one of those. Absolutely, man. <laughs> I appreciate it. Good to see you, bud. So successful little sesh at, uh, at Omnia. We did a little Pokemon 
voiceover stuff. I'll uh, share that on the channel when it comes out. When, it, when does that come out? Oh yeah. All right. I don't know what we're doing right now, but at some point we have to go catch some stuff. We have to talk about, oh yeah, the, all the new Pokemon that came out with the Sinnoh Stone. How good are they and which ones are the best ones? Hilly, which one's your favorite? Those are the questions we're all asking. I don't know. Okay, so we're making a quick stop right now for a live stream series thing that we're gonna be doing pretty good very soon here on the channel for Pokemon Let's Go. Need to make a quick pickup and then we're gonna head to Santa Monica and talk about these brand new generation for Sinnoh Stone Evolution Pokemon and which ones you should focus on first when using your Sinnoh Stone since it's incredibly hard to get. And this article actually is a very well written article by the Pokemon Go Hub. So I'll leave the link to it, the full hub is in the description and the link to Pokemon Go Hub is always in the description. So. I'll be back. I miss seeing the pier through this lens <laughs> with this quality. It's been a while since we had like a, a, a real camera. It's nice to finally have again. Now we're going in on a raid right now. As you can see, we're using a special Pokemon, a Badoo. I did hatch the Badoo and we'll show that clip right now. No, oh, we did it. <laughs> we did it. There's Badoo. We got Badoo. I was hatching these eggs. I just logged into Pokemon Go just to check in, and I didn't expect anything to happen, and we freaking hatched the Badoo for the Pokedex, <laughs> of course, when I'm, like, not recording or anything. Well, at least I have my camera next to me. Well, there it is. Oh, my gosh, man. That took so long to... Well, look, he's, like, a little red and, oh, red and blue right there. That's so cool. Yes. Finally, man, there's Badoo, and we have a couple more eggs going up, too. Well, that was fun. I literally just uploaded the second video of the day. I'm about to explode mentally. What if we got two Badoo? That'd be super awesome. That's cool. Shiny. Yeah. And that was it. That was it for the eggs. We got <laughs> coming back in here. The Badoo. Also, I think I where this magic up come from. Whatever. We got the Badoo right here. 451 CP. It's not good IVs, but who cares? Because we were just looking for the Pokedex. And uh, I mean, we can get Roserade as well once we get that Sinnoh Stone too. So that's kind of cool. But we have a shiny ready for that. But hey, Badoo in the Pokedex. That was random. Now, while we battle this raid, which is a Dust Skull, and actually, I don't know if it's this gym or a gym closer to the beginning of the pier, but we almost have one of these gold. Let's talk about the Pokemon, the Sinnoh Stone Pokemon. Pokemon that you want to avoid if you're really looking for the meta game you want to avoid evolving to unless it's your favorite unless you really want it just do these last again unless it's your favorite then go ahead starting off unfortunately with uh, with Togekiss 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 is kind of garbage it's super cool we've got the shiny Togepi that we hatched uh, two videos ago we've got that ready for Togekiss but that's probably something that I will not be getting right away the reason being it does not have access to fairy type fast moves which means it doesn't do much on the offensive side. It's only real utility is gonna be a fighting type counter and we have a lot of fighting type counters, a lot of them being better than Togekiss. So unfortunately as cool as Togekiss is and as shiny as it's gonna be when we evolve to it, Togekiss is a uh, save it for last kind of Pokemon. Another unfortunate one that also could be shiny, Magmortar. Magmortar is really bad. I don't have the shiny Magbar, Magmar or the shiny Magby, unfortunately, but some of you do, and even though you might want to evolve it directly to Magmortar, reconsider maybe. Its move pool is pretty terrible. Fire Punch isn't the greatest. Performs worse than all of the meta-relevant fire type attackers in Pokemon Go, so Magmortar, it's cool. It's not relevant. Another one, Miss Magius. It's uh, a really cool looking Pokemon, but it's basically a, a more trash version of Gengar. We actually should talk about Dusk Noir. We'll talk about that too as we catch this. Miss Magius, it's a worse version of Gengar, especially uh, Lick and Shadow Claw. It's just not really worth the evolution. It's cool, if you like it, do it, but like, again, it's one of those that's just like, skip it for now. Let's talk about Dusknor, which is Dusclops' evolution, which also could be shiny. We don't have that, it's a hard thing to get. This is one of the ghost type shinies I would've loved to got during the event, but we didn't do it. Dusknor has not great stats, not great attacks, not great anything. It's kind of massively garbage. It's got really bad DPS, it's just overall Dusknor is a Pokemon, it's not good. Uh, I might save this Duskull to evolve to a Dusknor, funny enough, as I say that. And we got a Giratina there, but we're gonna check the end of the pier and talk about the last Pokemon that you just don't want to evolve to over with the Sinnoh Stone. <laughs> We have a really big cluster at the end of the pier today. Oh, no we don't, because it all just spawned. Give it a second. We had a really big cluster at the end of the pier. This is a big cluster with a lot of potential shiny Pokemon, which is what I like to see. Now the last one out of all of the 11 brand new Pokemon that you can evolve to that you just don't want to evolve to is unfortunately Glysaur, which is a really super dope looking Pokemon, don't get me wrong. But it's got really bad stats, it's got bad moves, it's got a weird flying and ground typing. Again, it's a cool looking Pokemon, but when it comes to, you know, 
using it, it's not the best. Now we're gonna hightail it on over to that uh, Gila, not, I almost said Glysaur raid, to the Giratina raid and talk about the Pokemon that are good, but not the best ones to evolve to, but the ones that are, you know, you should do. Yeah, definitely. And hopefully on the way over there, we end up hatching some of these 10Ks. We're at six out of 6.7, very close. <laughs> Before the raid, I wanted to do one thing. I don't know if you can hear me. I just wanted to get our stamp. Two days until our Sinnoh stone, and then we can evolve. So, getting that done. Okay, cool. All right, raid. And 10K is hatching, which is uh, good because we still have the start piece down. And this is, I think, four 10Ks could give us the Riolu. We got the. We get the Badoo in today's video, which was great. Question is, can we rock the Riolu out of these dents? Actually, we just did hit 2.5 million dust, so we hit that, which is nice. That was the goal of the event. Didn't quite get it in the event, but we got it now. Come on, Riolu! Dude, I've got a lucky egg down, I've got a star piece down. If there was any time to hatch the freaking Riolu, it's right now. Also, man, from the fires, dude, my eyes are like drying out, feel kind of burned. It's definitely like you could, you could, there's smoke. There's smoke all over this area. Oh, and I know there is the glitch uh, because of the CP update that Pokemon are hatching with like half health. I don't know if you noticed it, but that Feebas was in the yellow. Watch when we hatch this. When we hatch this Riolo, look at its HP. Dang it. Dratini, why? Yeah, see, look, 57 out of 80 HP. It's like already kind of drained. So that is a glitch happening right now. Just know that. Well, that was a failure. Uh, let's see if we can. Oh, also, we've got a we got a Pokemon. Actually, I got a Golem, luckily, in that gym right over there. And we're about to hit gold on it. I'm going to see if we can do this like right now. That'd be cool if we could if we could watch the gold happen. Yeah, there it is. Look at that. No way. Okay. We got a gold level gym. Oh, that was our, this is our first gold level gym here at the pier. Oh, sweet. So if we go down here and we go to list, sort by points, we can see the Highland Baptist Church is the first gold one, and then end of Route 66 gym, which is the gym right over there on the pier. We finally got that gold, fantastic. Okay, now let's go grab this Giratina and talk about the rest of the Generation 4 Sinnoh Stone Pokemon and which ones you should evolve to. All right, now. In the Giratina, let's talk about the rest of the Pokemon. Not the ones you should evolve to, but the ones that you should evolve to after you evolve to the ones that we're gonna talk about after this. These are basically the middle tier evolutions. The good ones, but not the great ones. Starting off with, uh, unfortunately, Rhyperior. I think Rhyperior is the fan favorite out of these Sinnoh Stone Pokemon because that's the only one that I've freaking seen people evolve to. So if you have the Smackdown Tyranitars, the Smackdown Stone Edge Tyranitars from the Community Day, that is gonna be it's gonna be better than Rhyperior. I wouldn't say significantly better, but like that's definitely the better option over Rhyperior. The only time that Rhyperior will outperform the SmackDown Tyranitar is against a Zapdos because of its resistance to electricity, but that's about it. But it does make a big difference. So if you're going against Zapdos, Rhyperior is a solid bet. But if you didn't play Community Day or you forgot to evolve or you just don't have a lot of SmackDown Tyranitars, Rhyperior is a great bet for the rock type attacker. So it's it's pretty good. And Rhyperior as a ground type, it's not better than uh Groudon, who got a CP buff, by the way, so it's even stronger, just like Mewtwo. Pier 2 is now 4,159 CP, dude. 4,100, <laughs> that's massive. But Rhyperior is not that bad of a ground type if you're using it against electric types. Let's talk about Electrovire. Next up on the it's good but not great. Electrovire slightly outperforms Magnezone, basically due to its incredible electric moveset, Thundershock, and Wild Charge. It's solid. It's a solid electric attacker. attacker. But if you have legendary Pokemon like Zapdos and Raikou, they're going to obviously be meta-wise the better choice for electric type attacking, but Electrovire isn't horrible, and again, it is better than the Magnezone. Honchkrow up next. Honchkrow's not bad. It's a dark type attacker. It's on par with Weevil when it comes to attacking. Weevil is one of the better ones, by the way, but Weevil is a bit better than Honchkrow in a couple of aspects. Shout out to Jay Kim. Honchkrow, though, it can be shiny. It looks dope shiny. I've seen a couple of them, so it's a good bet for dark type attacking, not better than Weep. And then finally on the list of Pokemon that are good to evolve to with your Sinnoh Stone, but not the best, Porygon Z. Porygon Z is a normal type, which means it doesn't do anything. I mean, that's not true. It's got grass and electric type moves, so it's not the worst, but it kind of is the worst. It's the worst in this category, at least. It's kind of a novelty Pokemon. It's cool to have, but you're never really going to use it. And those are all the Pokemon that you should evolve second, unless they're your favorite. If, I mean, if you love Porygon Z, or you've got a shiny Murkrow, and you want that shiny Honchkrow, by all means, evolve to it. But just know that meta-wise, strategically, those are not your best bets. Those are the second to best. Your best bets are the last two remaining that we have not talked about. And we'll talk about those after I get this Giratina. If I get this Giratina. Not with those throws. I'm going to make a bold statement and say I think the throwing mechanics changed. 
for Giratina or for maybe all Pokemon because I don't know what happened. I had no problem hitting excellence on this Pokemon and for whatever reason, I can't like calculate my curves. Maybe I just woke up one morning and started sucking, but like if you guys have noticed the same thing, let me know in the comments because I, dude, I've never been inaccurate with Giratina up until like two days ago. That was the first excellent that we hit and we caught him. So nice, our one legendary for the day is down and I'm not sure if the audio came through. <laughs> when we got our stamp, but I was just basically saying that we were gonna collect the stamp, I'll get that one more, and we've got two more days until we can get our Sinnoh Stone and evolve to one of our Sinnoh Pokemon. I do see the Sudowoodoo, I am going to catch it, but the question is, which Sinnoh Pokemon will I evolve to? Most likely, one of the two that we're gonna talk about right now. Okay, what are the final two Pokemon that I've been hiding this entire time? The best two to evolve to with your Sinnoh Stone if you're looking for meta relevance. We'll explain that as we hatch these two kilometer eggs because they are here. Number one being Weavile. You do want to get your Weavile that is like damn near priority number one. Actually, Miss Magius, sorry. Speaking of Miss Magius, right there, need a special item, gosh darn it. Weavile comes out as a great ice and dark type attacker, like actually very good. Now, Piloswine does outclass it as a ice type attacker, but due to its uh, dark and ice, it's solid. And here's a, here's a Honchcrow coming soon. Can't wait for Honchcrow, man, that's shiny. Now listen to this, a Weavile with double ice moves is not quite as good as uh, Glaceon, a little bit worse than Glaceon. Nice little Porygon hatch there out of a 2K. And it's a little bit worse than Ice Beam Mewtwo, but it is significantly better than Lapras, Cloyster, and our old friend Articuno, unfortunately. And if you've got a Weavile with uh, double dark moves, it does actually do more DPS than a Bite Crunch Tyranitar. A good Ice type and a good Dark type option for your evolution. And one of the other best ones, Roserade. Fortunately for us, we do have a couple Shiny Roselia. One, with pretty high CP that will be going over to Roserade. Right now, currently in Pokemon Go, Roserade is the number one poison type attacking Pokemon, which is kind of cool for, you know, one of the evolutions to be the number one. A Roserade with double poison type will destroy a Clefable or a Gramble, which you actually do see in gyms pretty often. I see a lot of Grambles, at least in the gyms around Santa Monica, because Snubbles spawn so much. So even though you hear the word Gramble and you're like, ew, right? You might get some usage out of it. Also with Meteor Mash in the meta, Roserade is the second best attacker against all fairy types, which again, Still damn good. Now, Roserade is a grass type. It's better than Leafeon, and it's better than Tang Growth, but it is not better than Venusaur. It's not really good. You don't focus on Roserade as a grass type attacker. You don't want that. You want Roserade as the amazing poison type that it is. And that's the information to today's episode. I hope you enjoyed my TED Talk. I'm gonna go home. I'm going to stream Pokemon Let's Go. Tune in for that. Tune in for that on the YouTube channel today when you're watching this video. I'll be streaming either I already streamed in the morning or I'm streaming later on in the day. Follow the Twitch because I will most likely move streaming from the YouTube channel over to Twitch for Pokemon Let's Go so I can do it consistently without like annoying you guys on the channel. But check all that out. Now let's get back home and actually look at the story of the week because I missed that this week. Well, still this week technically, but story of the week. All right, today's story of the week is on the topic of anxiety. And it's a great reminder that through all of it, make sure to live in and enjoy the moment. I have about 13 total mental disorders and anxiety and panic attack disorders are very prominent in my family. In summer of 2015, I started having de debilitating panic attacks that cause breathing issues, chest pain, and many other symptoms I will not get into. Since then, I have battled every day to get up, go about life, and just function like a normal human. Honestly, if I did not have my husband, I don't know what I would do, as all my medications and treatments that we have tried do not help me. My attacks are totally random and I don't get triggers, but I have several baby or mini attacks a day, and it is rare that I go a day without a breathe stealing, heart racing attack. There is no way to prevent them. I have learned to breathe through them, and my husband has learned how to comfort me when they hit. Part two. What I have learned from this experience and having this struggle in my life is that you have to really just live in every moment and try to enjoy every Everything in your life. I got tired of waiting for a cure or someone to help me make them go away. I learned to live for my now moment and try to fill my life with smiles and laughter. Waiting for tomorrow or for a cure isn't living. Living is facing every day with the best attitude possible and just trying to enjoy every moment of it. It's about the journey, not the destination, and that is the message I wish to send into the world. Yes, the emotional and physical toll these attacks give me is taxing, and some days I don't want to or won't get out of bed. But part of living is learning how to live despite the things you face, not waiting for them to go away. Pokemon has played a big part in that for me. I might sleep until 5 p.m. and my husband will wake me
me up saying, there's a Shinx raid down the street, let's walk there. Or hey, they released new shinies today, let's go hunt. I will wake up and run out the door like I am running to the best Christmas present ever. Just being able to find and enjoy the little things every day really helps. So to all my anxiety-filled people out there, know that there are ways to calm yourself and cope with the anxiety, but it's hard to make it fully go away. But that's not what you should focus on. You should focus on the living in the moment, focus and enjoy the moments where you're not having anxiety, and when you do, learn how to manage it. My personal struggle with anxiety has been a fun one, uh, was having panic attacks and anxiety attacks all throughout the summer tour on all of the tours, um, on you know in Germany, in Italy, in France, in Spain, at GoFest. You guys probably couldn't tell, but I was having really bad anxiety through all of that. So since then, I've calmed down, I've kind of gotten over it, weirdly enough, but like it's still there and it still pops out every once in a while, but it's not as bad as it used to be, which is great. And I can finally drink caffeine and coffee again. Anytime I took a sip of coffee, it would give me a panic attack, but I've, I think I've worked past that now slowly. You know, a little bit of coffee, a little bit of coffee, more and more, more, so we're getting back into the, the coffee-fueled lifestyle. But anxiety, something you learn to live with, something you learn to cope with, but always enjoy the moment. And that was this week's story of the week. If you guys have anxiety problems or have anxiety advice or experience, pop into the anxiety chat in the Discord. The link to the Discord always in the description. And for the next week, next seven days or six days, because I missed maybe five days, for the next couple days, we're gonna be focusing on family life. So if you guys have experiences with maybe tough family life or just advice you would give on someone with a tough family life, definitely drop that in the chat. Myself, my parents got divorced when I was a little bit younger and there was a bit of a thing there. So hop in the Discord, share your experiences, give advice or just share your problems or get stuff off your mind that you have cluttered in your head. And yes guys, that was today's episode. Hope you all enjoyed. Tune in to the Pokemon Let's Go live stream happening on the channel in probably about half an hour's time from now or around an hour. I'll see you guys in the stream. See you guys in the next video where we talk about Pokemon Go and Pokemon Let's Go. Peace out.